Perfect. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Round Pen Plus. So right off the bat, Round Pen Plus, formerly and so what is Round Pen Plus? It's um, it's the next step past the Round Pen. And so for those of you, I'm sure everybody here is in the Round Pen. And if you're not, jump on Facebook, look up the Round Pen, and uh, that's the place for all of us professional facilitators to be together, to share ideas, to, you know, some exercises in there, um, stories in there, everything that helps all of our businesses forward but what is the round pen plus it's the next step it's for people to say you know what i want the accountability of live training i want the accountability of having someone to reach out to. um it's everything horses business mindset accountability and so exercises around horses exercise around stewarding horses uh business programs how do i build my business um what's the mind set needed to build my business. And so today we wanted to bring you, uh, so some of the people here are already in the Round Pen Plus, and again, formally called The Herd. Um, and to those of you that show up every week, thrilled that you're here. And we love that because that's what brings, and Jessica usually does lives, mm -hmm. brings her back every week in excitement for herself. Um, and if there's the first time, oh, let's get everybody muted if we could. Um, and if this is your first time, um, we're gonna bring you some value in this hour. So I'm just going to get everybody muted and, uh, let's get going. So welcome to the round. Mm. So a bit of housekeeping. This is meant to be interactive. And so use the chat as we go along. Oh, Pamela's saying I go by Pam. Great. Um, <laughs> so use the chat. This is meant to be interactive. Uh, let's get you muted though. If you're not muted, I can hear a couple of you and I'm just not sure who it is. Um, if possible, now some of you are eating, um, uh, turn on your camera. It's all good if you have to look sideways or do something else. We all have another life in the background. Okay. So let's get you muted. And yes, we're definitely recording. So where do our recordings go? They go into the round pen plus. So for the members that are there, and I'll chat about that at the end, um, that's where all of the recordings, all the exercises, all the handouts, everything um, that's in there. And right now, I think there's 56 exercises, et cetera, in there. They go into the Round Pen Plus. So let's keep us moving. All right. So who are Jessica and I? Uh, well, we are serial entrepreneurs. That's really what it comes down to. We love horse facilitated development. And we always say, we know how this game works because we're in the trenches too. We both run our own facilities on top of the round pen and equine entrepreneur. Why do we do that? Because we believe in the work so strong. And, uh, you know, I got going, I didn't have anybody. And so I reached out to somebody that I met in my course uh, for the help that I needed. And what we realized is that for us, we were lucky to have each other. We each build our own facilities really, really quickly. Why? Because we had each other. We could talk to each other. We could get ideas. We could bounce exercises, tools, et cetera, back and forth. So it made a massive difference. And since then, very, very fortunate to bring Joanne Routier on, uh, our grief specialist. Incredible. Look her up in the round pen. She's absolutely phenomenal. And so it's about bringing the tools to you that will help you build your business to where you want to go. So are we ready to get going and talk about leadership? Let's start with, as I switch, yeah, so the leadership lens, developing confident equine entrepreneurs. So in the chat, how many of you would like some tools to get a bit more confidence on facilitation, around your business, just becoming a confident equine entrepreneur? So anybody, and let's actually scale it out of 10, one being I am not confident at all in this arena, and and being like, I got this. I'm the leader of leaders. I'm the leader of the herd. And I got this. Where are you at? So Lynn is saying, yes, uh, we got some fives, some eights. And you know what? It's it's all cool where you're at. If you're at a zero, I always say it's really important to know where you're at so you can figure out where you want to go. Okay. So you got some uh, sevens, some eights, some twos, some seven. You know what? Fabulous. A six, a seven, a five. Again, it doesn't matter your number today. What matters is that you showed up, that you're here, that you're ready to say, I want to develop that and, and maybe figure out some tools along the way. So thank you for being here. Um, it's funny. I moved my herd today, only half of them, because the boys are very thin. So I moved the boys to uh, put some weight on. And it's so interesting, this idea of leadership, because I took the leader away, right? And so in the background, you're going to start to hear my young ones whinnying, because I can hear them <laughs> over here. 
because they're not that comfortable because they're not the leaders. So why leadership? Why are we talking about leadership? Why is leadership important? Leadership, um, it's about becoming the person. And that's really, really what leadership is. There's so many different leadership styles. And the interesting thing about the word leadership, hey, Pauline, you just popped up on my screen. The interesting thing about leadership and leadership styles is for a lot of people, that word can actually have a negative connotation, right? Maybe you've been somewhere where there's been uh, leadership styles that didn't um, weren't effective to who you wanted to be and where you wanted to go, right? And so the thing about leadership, it's not just about running a business. It's about being a leader who inspires, inspires communities, inspires other entrepreneurs, inspires their clients, their staff, and most importantly, their horses. And there's so much to learn from horses. So as we all know, horses are now leaders within their herds. Why? Because they have to be. As prey animals, they have to be. And there's so many leadership lessons. Um, and it's really about body language, instinct, and presence. Body language, instinct, and presence. And so let's talk about qualities of a leader. Let's throw it in there because it's so easy to think I'm a leader or I'm not a leader or leaders are born, or leaders are made, and there's all these other pieces. But let's get a time, I'd love to know in the chat, let's get a time where you had to take the lead. It was a challenging situation. What qualities do you have inside of you? And you may not be pulling them out every day, so you're thinking, I don't have any. What qualities do you have that make you an incredible leader? I'd love to know. Let's get that chat going. And I will wait all day long. If this is your first time here. <laughs> uh, so Frock, and I apologize, I'm probably saying it wrong, confidence. Confidence in a specific situation, says Brenda. I love that. Calm. Calm is a big one, for sure. Oh, this is funny. You two are following each other. <laughs> uh, I'm a good listener. I love this. I can think on my feet. Flexibility, says Lynn. Uh, medical service Heading a medical service during COVID response, amazing. Empathy, trust, connection, humility, emotional intelligence. I'm good at delegating and making, I think it was quick response. I missed it. When I know better, I do better. Oh, Nancy, that's positive. MJ, I've raised five boys. I had five brothers, MJ. I Amazing, amazing. Being confident, empathy, assisting direction, connection. Awesome. So, so many powerful ones. And I love this because it's so hard for people to actually look at their strengths. I'm a great listener and able to help a group move forward. I love that. So here's the thing. When you find your place and the emphasis here is your place of true leadership, you find your tribe. We're not just talking about the presence of leadership. We're talking about building your business. Okay. When you find your true leadership, you find your herd, you find your tribe. You're not in this world to be everything to everyone. You're in this world to find your space, your presence and attract your herd. Joanne's saying coach, mentor and facilitator and horses. I love it, I love it. You gotta know where you're at and what you're good at to know where you wanna go. So we know why leadership is important. I'm going to be constantly moving my things so I can see. So what is leadership in horse facilitated development? What is leadership in horse facilitated development? So understanding leadership in 2024, this is an interesting one. Many of you from business background or sorry, corporate backgrounds um, and leadership has changed so much. And so leadership as equine entrepreneurs is everything. Here's the thing, everything from guiding clients guiding this is actually where joanne uses in her horse in her um in her program um a grief guide and i love that word guiding clients towards transformation to managing a business and so everything you do is about leadership okay in, in as an equine entrepreneur how you do one thing is how you do everything right how you do one thing is how you do everything leadership is across the board you're not just a leader in your pasture. This is about becoming a leader in your herd, in your community, with your clients, with your children, with your spouses, with your animals, with yourself and your community. How you do one thing is how you do everything. 
So there's a big difference in leadership in a corporate environment and a leadership in first facilitated business. Okay. Why is that? Any, any idea why there's such a big difference and what I'm alluding to here, leadership from a corporate environment to leadership in first facilitated development. So go ahead, throw it in the chat. First facilitated I'm development for those that are new here. I'm going to to you. It's all. Oh, we need to mute Marius. There we go. Um, Course facilitated development is equine assisted learning. It's equine assisted psychotherapy. It is um, working with the magic of the horse human connection and everything in between. Okay. So, why is there such a big difference from a corporate environment to leadership and horse facilitated development? Responsibility, Juanita. Yeah. Responsibility runs huge when we're stewarding animals to the highest possible level. That has to be our number one goal stewarding animals to the highest possible level from there we can steward ourselves we can steward clients and we can look to transformation of the horse human connection but not without that so response with only two horses are the herd dynamics in play you betcha with one horse the herd dynamics are in play uh nancy the need to be present absolutely and so that's what it boils down to is that if we cannot find a place of true presence if we cannot find a place to lead from presence, from nonverbal communication, we cannot work with horses. Why? Because they live primarily in the present. We become unsafe to them. We become incongruent, incongruent, incongruent to them. So true leadership for yourself, for myself, for us to become true leaders, we have to look to our horses for the answers. And our horses are telling us, we need to be in the present moment. Julia, it's a lifestyle refined and live daily commitment to lifelong learning. You betcha. You guys are answering all my questions as we go forward. These are all going to come up in slides. So leadership is not about control. And many of you probably from past experiences of leadership, either when you felt you had to be in leader and go and throw it in the chat, where you felt you had to be the leader or you experienced a leader that was all about control. And it reminds me of, um, there's an old adage, it's, um, it's a chipmunk and a chipmunk puts its hand in a tree, in a knot of a tree. And it, it, as long as it takes out one um, hazel or nut at a time, it can feed itself. But as soon as it gets excited, it wants to control all the nuts, it can't get its hand out, right? And so this idea of leadership is not about control. It's about inspiring trust and confidence. And again, here with clients within your team, human and horse. Here's the secret. It starts with the horse. You can't instill confidence in your horses. That place of presence, that place of unwavering trust. You don't have your horses. When you don't have your horses, you don't have a horse facilitated development business. And so we can learn so, so much about that place. And so that place of it not being control, about letting go of the reins can be such a hard piece. But in 2024, when we're working with horses, it's about letting go of those reins. I worked for many quote leaders that tried to lead by control and micromanaging. Micromanagement, not a great environment. Yeah, I think anybody here uh, would probably agree, not a great place to be. And you know the interesting piece? That micromanagement, that control can be verbal, but it can just as easily as we learn from our horses be done without saying a single word. Don't ever believe that just because you're not using controlling words or dictating words um, out of your mouth, that you're not leading from a place of control. And a place of control is a place of lack. What our horses teach us, and we're gonna see this in a moment, it's about the non communication. So leadership in 2024 is built on authenticity. That's such a big word, write it down. Authenticity, presence and confidence. Authenticity, presence and confidence. But how? <laughs> Any of you having this question of like, but how? I would love to lead with, lead with authenticity, vulnerability, presence, confidence. But how do I do that? 
Anybody? Let's get the, again, let's just keep the chat going. How? Do any of you have that concern? How the hell am I going to do this? You know, I'm, I'm balancing so many things. Uh, Carrie is saying body language, 100%. I hear people say, uh, you know, my clients can't read nonverbal communication. You bet you they can. They've been reading body language their entire life. Transactional leadership is yesterday. Yes, Julia, it's so true. The world has changed. Command and control don't inspire. That's the whole thing is you have to become a leader that you would want to follow. Imagine becoming the leader that you would want to follow. It's about attracting your tribe. You can't be everything to everyone. It's about attracting your tribe. Uh, trust. And what is the true meaning of authenticity? I think, Donna, that it's such a great question. And uh, I think that the piece of that is authenticity is different for everyone, right? Uh, how to learn who you are and accept who that is and engagement. Love it. Great, great answer. So if we look to our horse friends, how the hell do we figure out leadership? How the hell do we figure this out? It's the first gift of the horse. What's the first gift of the horse we talk about at Equine Entrepreneur? Pillar number one is presence. Horses live in the present. They are fight or flight animals. They are prey animals. The only way they can survive is to be in that present moment. Okay. And so imagine... That was a good timing for my phone to go off. <laughs> I got to turn my phone off um, because we can't be in the present with distractions. So how do we get present? Horses respond to leaders who are present, clear, and grounded. You think about this little girl here on the left. Ever met a tiny little who has big presence? They can hold present. They're clear. They're grounded. They know exactly what they want. And they can have this horse follow them with absolutely no lead, no need, no control, no, you know, strong arming, any of these pieces. It's presence. Not about size. It's not about stature. Horses and people respond to leaders who are present, clear, and grounded. With no expectations, absolutely. So again, in the chat, scale of one to 10, when you're out with your herd, when you're building your business, when you're putting marketing into the world, how you do one thing is how you do everything. How present are you? How clear are you? And how grounded are you? Horses have an ability to read energy and body language, as someone said earlier. It's body language. We call it nonverbal communication, but it's body language all of us i heard a lot of you say okay perfect five sevens depends on the day i love that coming in um so many of us and it changes yeah that can be a big one donna and we're going to talk about that in a bit when we talk about imposter syndrome but we all have this ability to read body language and what the horses teach us is that it's the power of nonverbal leadership presence is simply nonverbal leadership from that present place, from right here, right now, from that innate knowing inside of us, that's how we find our leadership. And that's how we find our presence. You ever walk into a room and you feel a presence that's black? I always call it black. And you can feel from the other side of the room, there's something going on there. And you ever walk into a room and some lights up the room and it's not you can't pinpoint what it is it's not necessarily a smile it's not that they're the loudest person in the room it's not that they have a note on their chest with their name that says lead <laughs> you know there's something about their present space that present clear grounded non-verbal space the exciting thing yes yeah, the end admitted absolutely the exciting thing about that is every one of you in your own unique way have that, but it's up to you to bring that forward to attract your tribe. You are the leader of your tribe if you choose to step up and step into it. And I hope you do. I hope we're going to talk into that. So with presence allows us to become aware of what's happening in the unknown moments. And so pillar number one of Equine Entrepreneur in the Round is presence. You'll never hear me talk without hearing me talk about presence. Why? 
It's the first gift of the horse. It's the first thing our horses teach us. And without that, we equine entrepreneurs. We have to be able to mirror that unwaveringly for our clients and to our horses. And so leading with presence allows us to become fully aware, which is pillar number two of what's happening in unknown moments. And so you think about walking back into that room. That room is an unknown moment for me, for you, for all of us. Let's say it's a networking environment and you're going to build your business. Are you going to be the person that walks in with presence, with leadership, knowing what you do, knowing why you do it, and knowing that in the unknown moments in that room, you're there to share the magic of the horse-human connection? Are you the one walking in black with the, I'm not good enough, I don't know how to do this, what am I doing here? Because guess what? There's a big difference in how your business moves forward in those two places. The big difference on the black one that I don't know how I can't do this. You know what the notice is? It's I, 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 I. From that place of I can't, I don't know what I'm doing. You are not in the present. As soon as you start hearing yourself say I, I can't, I don't know how, what will I do? Know that you are no longer in the presence. How do you know? You're fear-based. Fear doesn't reside in the present. Fear resides in the, in the future. I got to keep going or I'm never going to have enough time to get through my slides. I love this stuff. <laughs> uh, self and personal work is essential. Absolutely. In continuous growth. I always say it is the work. Uh, for all, I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. Guilty of that sometimes. I love that you can see where you're at. Self-awareness, you know, and lack-based. Okay. So we know we got to be present. And when we're present in a session, we become fully aware of pieces we never knew were happening. That's when the right questions, the right quote questions pop out of our mouth. People always say to me, how do you know what to ask? I don't. I sit present and I wait for the question that flies out of my mouth. Okay. Um, same with this. I actually ran really, really short. I got this yesterday and I ran short moving my horses. But when you work from a place of presence, you find what you need. If it's not I, what is Great question, Carrie. When you go into a place of presence, you're not going future and past. You're simply allowing what is to be. And so in a place of what is to be, it's ever changing what's happening, but knowing that you're present, you're clear and you're grounded will hold you in that safe space. And it comes with practice, totally, totally comes with practice. And so nothing builds trust. Nothing builds trust faster than presence. Having a hard time with your horses? Get present. Nothing builds trust with your herd faster than presence. Nothing builds trust with your family faster than presence. We live in a world where people sit on their freaking phones <laughs> at night and they sit there on their phones and your kids are doing it and your spouse might be doing it, right? How do you build trust in your family environment? Put your phone down and start practicing presence. So what does presence and nonverbal leadership look like? So understand when I'm about presence, I'm also talking about nonverbal communication, nonverbal leadership. So everything you do sends messages to both horses and people. The way I show up today, whether there's two of you on or 200 of you on, everything I do sends a message to you. The way I work with horses, everything I do, how you do one thing is how you do everything, okay? Really, really important. So where are you excelling in your nonverbal communication, in your presence right now in your life? I'd love to know in the chat. Through your body language? Absolutely, Donna. Um, your body language, what you don't say speaks louder to people and horses. Than what you do say. I'll say it again. What you don't say with verbal words speaks louder than what you do say. This is the base of the work that we do. Horses don't give a flying rip about what the clients say is going on for them. Absolutely nothing to do with words. It 100% has to do with how they feel. It's the congruence between what they say and what they do. It makes the difference through breath work. Um, Brenda, thank you. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I, you know, and again, it's not about winning every time. It's about showing up every time. Uh, uh, language, mindset, mindfulness of my forces. Oh, so many good ones here. When I'm facilitating, I'm truly present. So important, Julia. If you can't be present, don't facilitate. It's not fair to your herd. Intentional smiling. Uh, breath work, focusing on breath. If anybody has taken, I haven't taken it yet. Dr. Susan Fay has a breathwork course that's just out. She's the uh, author of Sacred Spaces. I usually have it around me here somewhere. Uh, I'd love to know if you've taken it because I want to take that. So everything you do, okay? You don't get off the hook on a bad day. You don't get off the hook because you got clients you don't want to work with. You don't get off the hook because your kids are being shitty. Everything you do sends messages, okay? So nonverbal leadership, maintaining a calm. This word came up a lot earlier, grounding before clients come. That is huge, Shari. Um, taking the time before and after clients, silence. Oh, so good. Uh, maintaining a calm, confident posture, posture. So important, presence, posture. Signals trustworthiness, leadership to your herd, and makes you either safe or unsafe clients. I just want to pause on this quick. And I'm going to tell you we're going to be over an hour because I'm I'm enjoying this. Um, but that calm, confident, present, nonverbal leadership makes you safe to your clients. It makes you safe to your herd. So when you show up rushed, when you show up worrying about your mortgage, house mortgage, when you're down with your herd, you become unsafe. And so often people say to me, my horses aren't showing up. The clients aren't getting the ahas. It's really important that you check yourself. And what is your leadership looking like? Are you showing up for those people? Are you truly showing up in a present place? Or are you simply walking through with emotions? Uh, hello from the Wales, Dawn. I loved it. You're here. You got a connection. No, it's all good. Glad you're here. Remember your client session starts as soon as they drive onto your property. 100% Terry Ann. Absolutely. Um, this is a big deal for them. And, you know, I know even for myself, putting through hundreds of people a month, hundreds of people are coming through. You have to check yourself to remain the leader, to understand that we're dealing with people's lives. Because otherwise you can really get in that monotony of the next session, the next session, the next session. So pay attention, pay attention. I mean, it seems so simple, but we live in a world of scrolling. Get present and pay attention to that space. One of the big antidotes, well, not I should back up. One of the big things I hear from people, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. Yeah, guess what? I'm busy too. We're all really, really busy. It's a big old excuse at the end of the day. And uh, the whole thing about that is one of the best antidotes to not having enough time in the day, get present, get really, really present. There's no scrolling on social media in a present place. There's no, like, there's just no time wasters. You will find your days stretch out into a really incredible place when you commit to a little bit more time day after day after day spent in the present. Horses have so much to teach us individually about ourselves when we get curious, totally, 100%. So here's the thing, this, somebody kind of alluded to this earlier, the way you stand, move, engage, and breathe matter. They matter so much more than you even think when it comes to leadership in your life. So the way you stand, move, engage, and breathe matter. Stand up. Look people in the eye. Take a breath. It matters. So leadership by allowing. This is a big one you've probably never heard. Leadership by allowing. So the third pillar. Can you find a place where you can trust the process? And that process be a hard relationship that you're trying to work on that process could be clients showing up that process could be out networking and marketing your business can you find a place where you can trust the process so deeply that you actually lean into the unknown moments that you lean into them not to change them not to fix them but to lean into them and allow the horse or the client to lead out of 10 10 being i'm really good at that zero being that scares the shit out of me where are you at with this idea of leading from a place of presence from a place of non standing as tall as you freaking stand 
but knowing it's not about you. Can you lean into that? Yeah, that is where the magic happens. You touch us, Andy. So we got a seven, a three, seven, an eight, a six, a two, a seven, a thousand, an eight, a six, a ten, a six. This is something you can only learn by experience. What the exciting thing is, you're absolutely right, Leslie. You only learn it by experience, but you can experience it today. You can actually lean into your presence today right? and anything you're doing today and allow the unknown moments. Six, eight. So it doesn't matter where you're at. What matters is the commitment to where you want to be. And where you want to be, the difference is simply finding that place of present. So in, in course facilitated development, this truly is where the magic happens. This is where safety becomes a non-issue. Why? Because when we can sit in that present place, and as you've heard me say many times, and mirror that unwaveringly to our clients, the horses feel safe. And in a safe environment, the horses can show up. They're not unknown moments to the horses. Horses reflect congruent and incongruent to the client. They are not unknown moments to the horses. All of us are here doing horse facilitated development because a horse or horses changed our lives. But I guarantee it wasn't because you learned to ride a horse. Something happened for each of you. Each of you have a story. And I guarantee that story is based on unknown moments where the horses stepped up for some sort of transformation. We have to remember that's what we bring to people. It has nothing to do with us. And so the mark of a true leader is that space of being able to allow when they have no idea what the hell is going on. To allow the horses to lead is a scary space for you for some reason, although I have my friend, although I've had, I have and my friend cried during the session. Absolutely. Horses have an innate ability to crack people open but only when we allow them to be the guru. So if you're new here at the round pen, understand, take the pressure off. You're not the guru. We work with horses. It's not just facilitated development. It's not people facilitated development. It's not about you. It's horse facilitated. They are the gurus. You just get to step up and contribute as a leader at the highest possible level, but it's not about you. I get stuck sometimes knowing exactly what is happening, Without talking, yeah, I think you're, you know, yeah, serious to fill the space with words, 100%. The more you stand up into the, that leadership space, I always say the pause, that quiet space. My client, oh, oh shit, you know, she's about to come out with a whopper <laughs> when I'm quiet. How? Why? Because I'm in the present. Because I'm so aware of what's going on between the horse-human connection the question they fear most is about to come out because it's become so vulnerable and so open in that space. Yeah, Karen's saying they cracked me open. This is from Brown. I'm wondering based on that. Karen, is that you? Um, but yeah, allowing them, yeah, take the pressure off yourself. You're not the guru, but you are here to tribute and lead at the highest possible level. Karen Brown, I'm so happy to have you here. Um, we need to catch up, Karen. That's awesome. Yes, the, my horses have cracked you open. <laughs> uh, oh, Sandy's trying to get back in. Thanks for that. Um, so here's the thing. Sometimes you got to let go of the rope. So this was a really important, and I got to be quick. I know I'm going to go over time here, but that control, that hold on. Know that when you're trying to be in control of what are we doing next and what are we doing last and where are the horses going and all of this kind of thing. You're not in the present. I had a come to me one time. He was came from uh, uh, enforcement. He had to be here. He did not want to be here. And uh, long story short, and I don't even remember the whole story, but at the end of the day, what it was, was he had one of the ponies and had her by a rope and he's walking and like they're going around. And of course, my busy brain is going like, what are we doing? And, you know, I'm just kind of asking the question up. I'm in the unknown moments, wondering if we were ever going to get anything. He's holding on to her. She's dragging him around everywhere. Finally, uh, she drops and she starts rolling and he's holding on to the rope as she's rolling. Like he would not let go. And it brought up this huge conversation about, do you ever let go of the rope? And the reality was for him, the number of times let go of the rope control was zero. 
Everything in his life was being strong -holded. He didn't live in the presence. Everything was fear-based. Everything from his work enforcement to his family, to his kids, to his mental state, he needed to be in control. And the reality was he was so out of control. And he got dragged around by this tiny little pony all over. She's rolling. Really and, you know, so it opened up this huge conversation. And he came back the next time. And I said, you know, and again, it's not about me. It's just leadership by allowing, allowing him to have whatever's going on for him. And he came back this time and he said, you know what? That changed my life. And I said, what, what, what did? And he said, you know what I realized is sometimes you have to let go of the rope. And it's stuck with me. It's become a thing we talk about all the time. And for him, he moved away. Uh, you know, his life totally did a 360. And I get messages from him all the time saying, just so you know, Tamara, I'm still letting go of the rope. So that's what leadership by allowing really is. I probably missed a bunch here. I'm so used to giving advice to massage clients and making sure something happens. It's hard to keep my mouth shut. Well, you got to do it like your life depends on it because it does. Like your business depends on it because it does. This business is not about us. And if you feel the need to be in control and make it about you, you're not in the right business. Um, yeah, totally use that one. I like it. I use it all the time. So the intuition to trust. Ooh, intuition. So just as horses, again, our horses, are, they're the leader of the leaders. So just as horses act on instinct and sensitivity, we as equine entrepreneurs, Entrepreneurs need to learn to trust our gut in business and facilitation. So those unknown moments where you start moving to this side, or you say this, or you market this way, or something comes up and you say, you know what, I'm going to call that person and tell them about what I do. It's that intuition to follow that piece, knowing that all everything in intuition, everything in our gut is unknown. Horses constantly trust their instincts. They have to. They're in survival mode. They have to trust their instincts. As prey animals, they can overthink situations because the difference of overthinking, the difference of not making a decision can be life or death for them. And so that's the only way they can live. They have to feel, sense, and react. And they have to do those like that. And so when you think about being a leader that leads on intuition, that trusts yourself, that trusts your gut. How foreign is that to you? Is that something you can value into? Or are you like, that is super airy fairy, like witch brew, <laughs> talking about the idea that I'm going to my business, build my herd, build my leadership style, leaning into and trusting your intuition. Love to know in the chat, just to know where you're at. Sometimes my gut gets me in trouble. My gut's always been right. A nine. Intuition is the way success comes from. Yeah. And again, there's never a wrong answer. Don't be nervous of like, oh, my answer is different. Um, because it's about beliefs and your beliefs are yours. Right? So, yeah. Just love to know in the chat. My gut usually knows. Fear drops in with all the reasons not to. Yeah. Understand, Julia, fear does present it's past or future and so from those places you know figure out what your routine is to get yourself present so you can get moved through that i tend to second guess myself a lot so second guess is just not making a decision second guessing is changing decisions when we start calling them decisions we start to get more serious about them i have good intuition but often don't follow my gut instinct uh, right. situations where i didn't trust my gut and it was right learning to stop questioning myself Fear is afraid of pain. Ooh, good one. I always trust my gut instincts. Eight, courage to follow through is tricky. Yeah, inspired action, right? Can you move on that inspiration? And I'm almost always trust my intuition. Awesome. So this is a funny one. Yes, in 2024, isn't it funny how my are all cut off? But we can read them. In 2024, intuition is a leadership tool. Your intuition is yours. You uniquely you your own intuition so here's a cool thing and i had to google it up so i wouldn't say it wrong can we really trust our intuition because i'm hearing some people say yeah i can and i almost always trust it uh yeah why in 2024 because it's become mainstream could we always trust our intuition as a leadership tool you betcha joanne but in 2024 we can talk about it out loud without it being witch's brew <laughs> so 
Can we really trust our intuition? Well, there's research on that, which I brought for you. So here's the thing, what we often refer to as a gut feeling, as instinct, is actually your brain at work. It's processing information very, very quickly. Brain gathers subtle cues from your surroundings, like body language, tone of voice, environmental changes that you may not consciously notice. This is subconscious. It then rapidly, in a split second, compares these cues to your past experiences, your past beliefs, your knowledge, and forms an intuitive sense of what's happening and what decision to make. The process happens so fast and it's subconscious that it feels like the answer came from your gut, but it's really your brain acting on patterns and insights that's picked up over time. So when you trust that, you're actually trusting your brain's ability to recognize these patterns and make those quick instinctive decisions. I don't know what you guys, but that's cool. Our subconscious mind our conscious mind, it's like 40 bits of information per second is our conscious mind. So most of us try to make our decisions in life from our conscious mind. It's processing about 40 bits uh, per second. Our subconscious is doing about 40 million bits per second. That place that's running through all your files, running through your computers, is running through at such a rapid pace, making decisions about leadership from our conscious mind is absolute insanity. And so how exciting that we can trust those gut instincts. And I would suggest to anybody who said, I trusted my gut before and it didn't, was it your gut or did you have a feeling? And then did you analyze it with your conscious mind and make a decision with your conscious mind what your gut was saying? Or did you truly go with your gut instinct? And it served you wrong. So your gut brain, absolutely. And there's a whole bunch more research on why you actually feel it in your gut because it's a sensory that is being sent from your mind, your brain to your gut. But we got a lot more slides. I got to keep talking. <laughs> so building confidence in leadership. Yeah, it's, totally. It's a whole topic. I could go on about subconscious forever. But so we know we need to be present. We know we need to allow we know we know to use our nonverbal communication. But you know what? To do that, we need confidence. And be the leader that we're here to be. And each of us, I truly believe, from where you are to where you want to go, the answer is leadership. I guarantee it. From where you are today, where you want to go in your business, in your relationships, in yourself, it's leadership. So how do we build the confidence to do that? So my first question... I know in the chat, general question, do you see yourself as a leader? I'll give you a sec. Do you see yourself as a leader? And this is about honesty. It's not about a right answer. It's just about honesty. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yep. Mostly. That Catherine. Yep. Cool. All right. I love the participation. Love. But yes, but I need to practice it more. Yeah. Most of the time didn't always, but then people kept looking to me as a leader, growing into it. It's about authenticity, people. If the answer is no, good for you for showing up because the leadership is in there. I guarantee it's within each of you, but it's about showing up. And it's about becoming a leader that you would follow. So my next question is in this arena, do you see yourself as a leader in the arena of horse facilitated development? or equine assisted learning, or horse facilitated psychotherapy, or whatever you call what you do. Do you see yourself as a leader in this arena? And the reason I ask that is because arguably I've been in leadership my whole life, but my leadership looked like business leadership for years and years and years. And sometimes our mind does tricky things to us. Yes, you're a leader over here in corporate leadership. But are you a leader in horse facilitated development? I'm a leader with my kids, but I haven't spent my whole life with horses. Can I really truly say I'm a leader in this arena? Again, I'm giving ideas, I'm not children, but. Um, ooh, Julia, this is good. I've been wintering on leadership. Mm, that's a big one. A leader doesn't always have to be a, you betcha. And we're gonna talk about that, Pauline. I love that you brought that up. 
Always with horses when he is feeling good. I want to be. Bev, I love that because it starts with that want, right? And moving into that place of I. Think about your horses. Is it the leader that's pushing everybody around that from the outside people might think it's the leader? Or is it the quiet, passive one that at the end of the day walks away and they all follow? That's the true leader. Think about that quiet, cool confidence. If you, like me, work your horses at liberty, it becomes apparent very, very quickly who the true leader is. Because I know I have certain horses that can walk away. We have a huge pasture that they work. They can leave at any point. I have no fear when certain horses step out and walk away that they're going to leave. But when the leader steps up and gives me the look, <laughs> I know they're leaving. <laughs> like it or not, you know the true leader uh, in your herd. Uh, I feel most later when I allow the horses to leave. That's amazing, Leslie, because that's step number two. Step number one's presence. Step number two is, uh, was, uh, sorry, that's step three. Awareness, step three is so leadership by allowing. Um, yeah, there's a wildly, they would follow her, but she's not dominant. A true leader in life is rarely dominant until they have me. So leadership requires courage to start that's the big thing. It, sorry, I'm getting to start. It requires courage to step up and take charge. It re, someone once told me, Tamara, the tall poppy gets chopped. We were talking about leadership and that was her fear. And I never forgot that word. The tall poppy gets chopped. But are you willing to stand in that place of true leadership, knowing that everyone in your world benefits when you step up, especially in the unknown moments. So what is your butt? You've probably heard this from me before. It's like when you're out in a session and someone's talking and they come and they're talking with the horses and everything sounds great. Yeah, my husband and I, we have a great relationship. Kids are good, straight A students. And you're there going like, why are we here? And the horse, all of a sudden whips their butt in the person's face. Maybe that person just said, life's good. I have no reason to be here and the horse whips it. You know, there's incongruence in that statement. Everything's good, life's good. There's an incongruence. It's the butt. And it's the butt that we work with in horse facilitated development. And it's the butt that we have to face to become the confident leader and step into the person at the highest possible level. So what's your butt between where you are and where you know you could be? And none of you are at your top leadership. How do I know that? Because none of us are at our top leadership. We have more, we have butts, we have doubts, we have fears. What is standing in the way? What is the butt? If you're in my pasture today and we were working with the horses and we were out there having this chat, what would be the thing you try to pawn off is that you're doing really well, but you know that's your butt that's standing in between where you are and where you want to go? Maybe doubt. People get to know when you will step, okay? It's about letting yourself get chopped as a tall poppy, 100%. Self-doubt, fear, awesome. We have to know where we're at to know where we're going to go. What's your butt? What's holding you back? We are so fortunate. I can't even call this work. This work, to work, doing this, sharing transformation and growth with horses and the horse-human connection around the world. But none of us are working at that level that we could be. What is it? Because we got to find that place so we can move to where we want to be. Um, judgment. Yeah, worry about judgment. So again, use the word worry, Chrissy. Past or future. That's a fear-based place, right? Get into the present. Get yourself into that present moment and have a little thought about this and see what comes out for you. Do it with your horses. A lack of self-belief. Okay. Money blocks, fear of failure. Having my own environment to work from. I'm about six weeks away. Nancy, you're on your way. I love it. Energy. Okay. Fear of being judged. Judgment of others. Fear of things not working. Money blocks, lack of confidence, fear of failure. Okay. 
You got to know where you're at to be able to figure out to get where you want to go. So leadership follows confidence. Write that down. Leadership follows confidence. Hmm. Confidence comes from self-awareness. Understanding who we are. But understanding you're uniquely you. I'm uniquely me. Trying to be a leader in the way that I portray myself will never get you to your leadership, to your top. Why? Because you're uniquely you. And there is a huge herd and tribe of people, community of people that are attracted to what you have to offer. But you got to know what that is. So let's throw it in. Self-awareness. What are you good at? When it comes to leadership, when it comes to life, what is your thing? Yeah, totally. Limited edition. I love that, right? You are. And if you think I'm totally full of shit, it's time for you to zoom in. Because at the end of the day, if you zoom in far enough, I guarantee you're the best in the world at something. Lola, I'm looking at you right now, actually. <laughs> I guarantee when you zoom in far enough, you're the best in the world at something. That's what people are looking for. And that's where true confidence comes from. So what are you good, good at? What's your self-awareness? Helping people with pain. Amazing, Juanita. I'm not good at that. Bev, connecting people. I'm actually not good at con I'm not a connector at all. Bev, that's huge. Pushing people and stretching of tolerance. I like that, Donna. Uh, what is it? Okay. Because when you work from yourself, from what you're the best at, you get confidence. When you have confidence, you step into the leadership role in the world that you're here to do. I'm very good at helping people be, feel seen and comfortable. Brenda, that is massive. You know how many people have felt seen in their life? Who are you not to share that gift? I'm good at encouraging, supporting people to try new things. Huge. A lot of people live in a box where they don't try new things. Seeing others, act on a spontaneity. Uh, translating the equine work to help people related to the workplace. That's huge. That's so practical. I love it. Helping young women take the reins on their life. Ooh. I'm good at making people feel calm and safe. Grief educator, author, listening, leader, safe space, transformation of self, beauty. Being an advocate. What a strong word for students with disabilities in their families. I mean, I don't even know where to start with that. Okay. I'm good at me making people feel calm and safe. A lot of people in the world don't feel safe. Building relationships, especially with youth. So here's the thing. If you haven't figured out yours, I guarantee it's something that comes easy to you. It's something that you're like, oh yeah, that's just my thing. Guess what? Your thing is not other people's things. You're born with that thing to share that thing. And that's where confidence comes from. And when we're confident, we step into that grounded, safe space that works for horses, it works for humans, and it grows your business faster than anything else. When you truly understand strengths, your gifts, you're uniquely you, you begin to lead with confidence. So leadership follows confidence. You begin to lead with confidence. All good, Joanne. I see. That. So wherein lies your zone of genius? I'm not going to stay on this a lot because if you go onto YouTube and you look at Equine Entrepreneur or if you're in the Round Pen or the Round Pen Plus, there's a lot of learnings on your zone of genius. It's the, in fact, it's the only way to build a business. If you want to build a business to go to the level that you want with horse facilitated development, you need to get very, very clear on what you're the best build at. We call it your zone of genius. We also call it your zone of significance because there's a level beyond success it's called significance. So leadership follows confidence. What's your self-awareness? What's your genius? So we can't go any further without discussing the elephant in the room. I know so many of you are thinking it. I see it all the times when you join the round pen and you say, what do we want to work on? Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome kills more dreams and more transformation for clients than anything else. Again, Go to our YouTube. There's a full recording on imposter syndrome. It's way better than I'll be able to go into today. But here's the thing. When it comes to imposter syndrome, if you're feeling that, my first question is, are you actually impostering? 
Because many, many times when people say, I feel the imposter syndrome, I got to get over it. They actually are impostering. What do I mean by that? They're working in the wrong lane. They're trying to be everything to everyone. Just because horse can doesn't mean you should. They're working with children when they're when it's not even close to their zone of genius and they should be working with adults. They're doing things that they shouldn't do because they're trying to be everything to everyone. And they're wondering why they can't step into that leadership role. True leadership is about presence. So not just being present, but living integrity and vulnerability in presence. And presence is who you are. And so can you actually be impostering? Absolutely. Are you working with the wrong people? Are you teaching writing lessons when you don't know how to teach writing lessons? <laughs> Are you, you know, it goes on and on and on. And so the thing with imposter syndrome, it's not getting over. It's about understanding. Are you working in your zone of incompetence and trying to be a leader in an area that, sorry, not sorry, the rest of the world's better than you at? You know, are you, you know, Again, that best, the rest of the world's better at. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. I don't work with a lot of kids. Why? Because I'm impostering there. I didn't go into childcare. I didn't, would never have been a kindergarten teacher. So I am impostering and I will feel that I am nowhere near leadership when I'm working with young kids with nothing going on. There is zero bit of imposter syndrome when I work with men, adults, something serious going on in the world, ready for a change. I got this. The imposter is nowhere near. Why? Because that's my zone of genius. So imposter syndrome doesn't reside in your zone of genius. When you work at that highest level, you won't feel imposter syndrome. You can step up in presence, that top leadership level, because you're working with the right people. You are uniquely you. And it's so, so important that you surround yourself with people that are in your zone of genius, but doing the things that you know you're the best in the world at. If you find yourself feeling imposter syndrome, your first question should be, where am I acting? Where am I working? Where am I trying to be a leader from my zone of incompetence or my zone of competence? Those low level places, there are many people in the world that are way better at than you at. Allow them to do it. So for more on imposter syndrome, go check out our YouTube because I can go on and on. Um, but super important. So practical strategies for building con confidence. Let's just get practical. Daily reflection. And again, if you have strategies, please show put them in the uh, in the chat here. So daily reflection. Did I step up to be the leader today? that I want to be is my presence am I on every level of life how I do one thing is how I do everything stepping up to my level of leadership or am I letting myself down am I allowing myself to slide okay daily reflection super important seek feedback and take ownership on that when things aren't working seek feedback with our aim and take ownership on that. When we hold ourselves to the highest possible level, we build confidence. When we build confidence, we step closer to that leader that we want to be. When things go really, really well, seek feedback and take ownership. How do you grow to that next step? Yeah, responsibility. It's huge, 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 huge. And that's that take ownership. Take responsibility to your life. You get one go at this life. I don't know the rest of that. Are you taking ownership or responsibility to the highest possible level? That's how you build your confidence. Commit to leadership risks. I put small in there. That's up to you what small is or large. But commit to taking those risks. I'll tell you a secret. When I put out something, hey, we're going to on Wednesday talk about this. Or week in the round pen we're talking about whatever um how to work with um a sensitive horse whatever it is those are always leadership risks for me. why because i don't have them ready to go they're coming from the thousands of times that i've done this type of thing 
because they're in my zone of genius, but they're always a leadership risk. Why? Because I haven't decided what I'm going to talk about. Today, I, I wrote down some bullet points, but I wasn't sure how I was going to present it because I present from that space of right now in the unknown moments of presence. So commit to those. What do those look like for you? So I'd love to know in the chat, what leadership risks can you commit to? And then take ownership that you're going to step up no matter what to deliver your leadership at the highest possible level. Focus on inspired action. How do you build confidence? You do something every single day. If you want to be building your business, do something every single day. If you want a better relationship with your horses, do something about that every single day. And so what's inspired action? In my world, I always talk about two things. Efforting, doing what you think you have to to move forward, and inspired action. Very different. Inspired action is about getting present. Present place, inspiration hits. From that present place where inspiration hits, you get the decision to either take action and move forward or to recede. But that's up to you. So often people say, well, I didn't get, you know, I, I didn't, there was no inspiration. Well, you can't sit and worry about how that inspiration hits. I guarantee it hits every single time. So it's not actually about the inspiration. It's about the action. Okay, someone's not muted. If you're not muted and you're talking, or if anybody can see who that is, I can fix it, but I don't know who it is. Oh, Melinda. Okay. Sorry, everybody, just a sec. I got to find her. Well, Melinda, if you can mute. That would be good. Sorry, everybody, Jess is usually here with me today. I can't find her. Okay, hopefully she has. Um, all right, so commitment to taking inspired action. It's a commitment because it's easier to sit back and wait for something to happen than actually take that inspired action. Thanks for that, Carrie. Um, so confidence builds as we commit to those leadership risks and we actually take them. As we take ownership on not what what's not working and actually do something about it. As we focus on inspiration and then actually take massive amounts of action towards it. And a badass list. You should read the book Be Seen by Jen Gottlieb. Nothing to do with horses, Be Seen. It's about taking inspired action. It's about taking risks. It's about throwing everything at what you want but she talks about her badass list and we're going to do one right now and her badass list your badass list is the things that you've done in your life big or small make you feel like a badass that make you feel like it's called be seen um that you can remind yourself like that i do this with clients all the time that you can remind yourself right now hey i did do that when you're in the dumps and you're not feeling like a leader and you're working hard towards it what's on your list and again, your list doesn't have to be the huge things. It's about celebrate all the successes. My mom, uh, she always said growing up, if you take care of the little things, the big things take care of themselves. If you take care of the little things, the big things take care of themselves. And I'll tell you, that advice has served me my entire life. It's about the leader who, in my world, I won't walk by garbage and not pick it up. Because that's a leadership piece for me. Is that, and is it my job to pick up everybody else's garbage in the world? Maybe, maybe not. But that's the level of presence that I hold myself at as a leader. When I walk by, I pick it up. Because if I take care of the little things in my life, the big things always take care of themselves. So what's your badass list? And so I'll give you a couple ideas. And it could be huge. And it, it, and it doesn't have to be. It's about what makes you proud. And I want to know real quick, one word, one sentence, what is it for you? I just came through the last three months. I've been taking care of my mom and she's got bone cancer and she's got a broken back. That's just real blunt. Um, I never thought in my life I could be a caregiver, but we've just come through three months where they told her she'd never walk again. And I've got her walking on the cane and I'm going to own that in my world. That's badass. And when I feel low, the fact that we could do that. Yep. Yeah, that's the, 
Uh, no, that's not the book, but that is a good book too. Um, when I feel low, I can be proud that I was able to do that. Okay. Um, it could be that, you know, you're working with your horses and you've got them uh, leading. It could be absolutely anything, but I really encourage you after this call to write out your badass list. You know, there's big ones or small ones, you know? Uh, so let's hear it. I want to know in the chat, um, what is it for you? You know, what are those go-to ones when you're feeling shitty that you can say, I did that. You know, at 27, I built a real estate company. When people did not believe that somebody my age that they would ever follow, I stepped in the leadership role that it took to be hiring all the men in town, because that's who does real estate, that are all 50 plus, and build a significantly strong company. I'm proud of that. That's on my badass. I met and married the man of my dreams when I was 18 years old. I didn't marry him at 18. And we've been together 25 years. In my world, that's badass. And I'm proud of that. Again, what is your list? Uh, facing death of two of my children and now having one in the ICU. Badass, Bev, badass. And sharing it here, even more. Okay? Amazing. Uh, I'll put book in here. So what is yours? Get them in there. I founded and created a nonprofit. 10 years in business. Nancy, amazing. Able to help people that can't get relief anywhere else. Amazing. Okay? Some of them might feel some of them might feel tiny it's about whether it makes you feel badass and that's uh super super important uh i'm just putting this in here taking control i following my divorce incredible founded a nonprofit 24 years ago still going oh i just sent it out but i sent it there we go everyone it doesn't matter what it is oh that same business that i'm super proud of I also am super proud of that I picked up and left and moved my husband and I 500 miles away because I knew like I, like I knew inside of me that I wanted to do horse facilitated development and then we could change lives with it. People thought I was batshit crazy. Doesn't matter. What is it that you're proud of? Over C is at 26 shitting myself and so scared, but I did it anyways. Called the bluff on my boyfriend to come home or stay or stay home. Come or stay. I love that, Deanna. My accomplishments last five years, build my vision. I had a home birth. Huge, huge, huge. Catching people's eyes, knowing strangers, bringing a smile to theirs. Just retired from 25 years of teaching, 20 with special ed. Amazing. Learned the software, created my own web page for badass kids. Moved across the world by myself at 19. Again, these, and it doesn't have to be what looks like. So often, the things we're most proud of are things that are huge. Sometimes it's, I have no idea how to build a website, but there was a glitch on mine and I just got it figured out. And that's badass. It's going on my list. Tonight, I want everybody to do this and I want to see them come up in the round pen. Okay. I want everyone to commit to that. Start doing it with your clients. Start empowering your clients. This is about the leader that empowers clients. Okay. Someone got out of the car today when they didn't want to and engaged in a session. Carrie, that's huge, huge. Write it on your list. Always available to adult kids on the phone if they need to talk to your adult kids. That is really, really huge. So many people, if they had someone to pick up the phone to, would still be here. Staying committed to EFL for the last decade, despite it being a youth road. Maybe it was long road. Huge. Doesn't matter what yours is. If it makes you proud, it's important. Celebrate your successes. Do them in the round pen. Get your list up there so we can celebrate you. Um, together, collaboration over competition, we're pretty strong. I agree. They don't have anyone who will listen yet. So leading clients to transformation. Leading clients is about guiding them, back to that word, through moments of vulnerability, helping them face discomfort and holding space for their growth. Are you the type of leader that's willing to sit in vulnerability? willing to help them face discomfort and are you willing to hold space for their growth people want to be leaders people understand it's going to take leadership but they're not always willing to do what it takes at our facility everyone that leaves here gets tangible results why because our horses are incredible. <laughs> Your horses are incredible. But because we're willing to talk about vulnerability. We're willing to talk about everything a horse does is for a reason. 
We're willing to talk about discomfort. And we're willing to be quiet and hold space for their growth. This came up earlier. People said, I'm scared of the pause. I'm scared of the quiet. I want to fill that space. True leaders allow vulnerability. They allow discomfort. And they understand that their job is to hold space. People come for growth. Otherwise, they can go play with ponies. They can get horse lessons. They can be around horses. They come to horse facilitated development for growth. And we're in a world that so often people and social workers and clinicians shy away from discomfort and vulnerability. We live in a world where we let people off too easy. They're coming for growth. Your horses are ready to do it. The question is whether you are. So you as facilitator, you set the tone for your sessions. You don't have to set the tone the same way I set the tone. I know how a session looks for me and what our mandate and our vision for our business is. The mandate and the vision for your business is completely different. So holding space in my world, Brenda, is so often about the pause. It's about the quiet. That place of safe. It's that place of me being present and allowing the horse and the human to interact without me jumping in, without me uh, having to guide or direct or parade horses through obstacle courses with expected outcomes. It's that holding space that the horse knows what the client needs and the horse is reflecting that to the client. And it's not up to me to jump into that space, to answer the question exactly, to not try to fix it for them. That holding space for me and other people would have different answers. Is that allowing the horse to bring forward the piece that the client needs and for the client to accept that in the way that works for them? Often it's that fix, that jump in, that make it happen. Um, but really just holding space that I don't know what the growth is that, that they need. And I often don't find out at the end because it's not about me. And so we have to set the tone. We get to create an environment where clients feel safe to explore their emotions or we don't. So that's the big piece, or we don't. So are you setting the tone where clients feel safe? Yeah, no judgment is a huge one. So what expectations do you have for yourself as a leader for your sessions? What is the presence that you're committing to in your life is showing up? Lots of good questions, eh? So The Leader Without a Title, Robin Sharma. If you haven't read this book, it's so easy, but you should, this. So I was 27, I said, when I uh, built my real estate company, I was a baby in the world of real estate. And one of the other brokers handed me an olive leaf. Olive leaf came in the form of a book, The Leader Without a Title, Robin Sharma. Changed my world. Changed my, it's so simple, but it changed everything the way I moved forward in building that business and building this business and building a lot of businesses. And it changed the way I looked at personal responsibility. So leadership isn't about I'm the manager, I'm the owner of the company, you know, all this stuff. It's that place of without a title, who are you? How do you show up? What's that nonverbal presence that you bring to the world? Are you willing to loosen control? We all know control doesn't work with horses. <laughs> Why would it work with humans? Are you willing to control and allow your client to take charge of their own journey? This isn't about you, but so often we make it about ourselves. Are you willing to allow your herd to step up? If your herd's not stepping up, the first thing I always say to people is to look at themselves. I'm not saying that that's the only answer, but it's the answer that I'll give you. Are you allowing your herd to step up? Are you safe to your herd and your clients? Are you in the present? Are you allowing them to step up and reflect what's needed? As guru, this isn't about you. It's about them. And you simply contribute at the highest possible level from the background. Are you willing to? Or does that scare the pants off you? I'd love to know again in the chat. 
so boundaries, expectations, and goals for your clients. Super important. People need to know what they're coming for. They're coming for transformation and growth, I guarantee it. Are you willing to guide them there? Are you willing to allow the horses to step up? Are you willing to simply sit back and contribute in the background asking great questions? So just strong horses, like every herd needs a strong horse. If, you ever, if you've ever had a herd that doesn't have a leader, it's mayhem. It's chaos. They're looking. They're panicked. They're looking around for a leader everywhere they go. They're not looking for the dominant. They're not looking for the pushy. They're looking for someone they can reside and trust in. Guess what? So is everybody else in the world. Everyone in your life is looking for someone they can reside and trust in. Are you willing to be that person? So it's all about you and it's not about you. That's the interesting thing. When we start our, and Karen uh, are on here, when we do our hands-on horse facilitated uh, certification, it starts with saying, it's all about you. It's not about you. To facilitate at the highest possible level, it's about becoming the person who can do it. It's about becoming the leader without a title. That's listening control and allowing their journey. So leading your business with clarity and vision. So just as horses need that clear, confident leader to follow, your business needs a clear vision to thrive. So there is a workbook I'm going to give you for this whole program. And I want you to go back because we've learned so much. What is vision? Do you actually have one? Like in the chat, do you actually have a vision? And I'll be really clear. In my personal business, I had a big vision when we started. We nailed those goals and I have not set a new vision. And there's parts of my own personal business that's floundering. On the outside, it's doing really, really well. It's super busy. On the inside, I'm going, I don't know what I'm doing next. And so I need a new clarity and vision. I'll be really on that. So do you have a vision? Do you have a clear vision to thrive? It's not a, just a vision of this is what I'd like to do. Do you have a clear vision to actually thrive? That's huge, right? Are you committing to thriving? Because the world is looking for horse facilitated development. I'll tell you that much. There is crazy. I've had people from all over the world come here. Why? Why would they fly into the middle of absolutely nowhere? Under? Because we're serious about what we do. But guess what? They could have come to you just as easy or a lot closer. So do you have a clear vision to thrive? Are you leading your business? Are you a leader in your business? What's your purpose and why are you doing this? I love, Donna, that you're questioning it. I love that people are saying they need to rebuild. I love that someone is saying wellness center. Okay. So is it a dream or is it a vision? Is it something you're going after? Are you committed to thriving? And why are you doing this? So make a freaking decision. If you were in front of me, I would say that a lot more serious. It's about leading your business with the same presence and confidence that you bring to client sessions. And if you don't bring presence and confidence to your client sessions, where do you bring presence and confidence? How you do one thing is how you do everything, okay? Be the type of leader that you would want to follow. You know in your mind what that is. Go after it. It's within you. Because here's the thing, and this came up earlier. In not making a decision, I want you to know that you are making a decision. You're making a decision to allow what you get. Whatever comes at you, because as you're weighing out options, you're not making a decision, you're not following the gut, know you're making a decision. Know that you're missing out on opportunities that you can't see because you're not making a decision. Leaders make decisions and they make them very, very quickly. And they change them very, very slowly. So in conclusion, presence, intuition, confidence, and vision. Write those down. What is your presence? Who are you? How do you show up? And how do you commit to that every day? Your intuition knows best. Don't we all want a personal assistant that can whip through all of the pros, the cons, the beliefs, and give us an answer in one second? Yeah, you have one. It's called your gut. It's called your intuition. Lean into it. 
Leaders make decisions very, very quickly. They change them very, very slowly. Confidence. Get to your badass list. Make it. Put it in the round pen. Envision. What is your vision that you're willing to commit to to thrive? Commitments are based on results. When you start making commitments at the level of, I guarantee 100% I am doing this, come hell or high water, you watch your world change very, very quickly. Commitments are based on results. So leadership is a journey. It really is. You know, this isn't about I've arrived, I'm a leader. It's a journey. It's not a destination. So horses continue to grow within their herd. You see different times that different leaders pop up. Last year, there was about six months. My leader, non-dominant, but my leader, stepped back and he fumbled and he, you know, walked through some stuff. Guess what? I stepped back. I was fumbling. I was walking through some stuff. Other leaders stepped up. So entrepreneurs need to continuously evolve their leadership skills, evolve their presence, evolve who, evolve who they are and who they would follow. So <clears throat> thank you for being here. I'm going to put into the chat the workbook that goes along with this. Um, I'm way over time, but thank you for being here. It, uh, I love talking about leadership. Why? Because leadership changes the world. It truly does. It's honestly one of the only things if we had true leadership at every level in our world, we wouldn't be facing the problems that we are today. Because we face the problems we are today, um, I truly believe that horse-facilitated development needs to go around the world. But it's going to take leaders like you that show up and do the work. So uh, the top link is for the workbook. Grab it. Download it. Fill it out. Check out your leadership your skills, do your badass list, do the whole thing, download that. And the second piece is that if you're interested in the Round Pen Plus, this is what it is. Every two weeks, there's a live, there's always a download and there's a live training. You can actually reach out to me directly. I'll answer any of your questions. You can reach out to Jessica. That's the accountability. So it's Horses Business Mindset Accountability. It's a monthly membership. It's $49.99 US. You can cancel at any time. It's got exercises, horse exercises. It's got business exercises. It has mindset exercises. It has everything needed to build business and become the leader that you want to be. So if you're interested, you can grab the link there. Like I said, you can cancel at any time. Um, but if you need that mentor, that person in your back pocket that helps grow, um, the best way to do it without a one-on-one -on -one is through the Round Pen Plus. So uh, there's your links. I hope it helped. I hope you're excited to step into it because the world is looking for more equine entrepreneurs. It's up to us to make it happen. So um, if you're not in the round pen, get in there. If you're not in the round pen plus, uh, jump in there. Uh, yeah, totally. Lynn just asked about, yeah, if you're already in uh, the round pen or if you were in the herd, you're automatically in the round pen plus. So yes, absolutely nothing changes there. Uh, if you're not in there, um, yeah, if you're looking for exercises for horse exercises in the pasture, if you're looking for business exercises to build, if you're looking for mindset exercises, because that's where you know you're lacking, all in there. They're ran out of an app. You literally download them as you want. And the accountability portion looks like every two weeks we do a live like this with a downloadable piece. It all goes in the app. So you have all the recordings. So um, you've got the links. Hope we see you there. In the meantime, I can't wait to see everyone's badass list in the round pen. So thanks everyone for showing up and I hope you have a great rest of your day.